<laughs> and then I said, No, Fanny, grip it harder. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's wonderful because we, we managed to kayak back to shore and she didn't lose that oar, I can tell you. Oh, and, uh, you uh, really did stick your oar in, eh? And we didn't have sex because she's my mother. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Big Damn Set the Tone at the top of the show. My name is Chris Britbox. We've got everything that's on British TV, (laughs) except when we don't, Johnson. Uh, I'm not going to give my name for uh, legal reasons, but I am the same person that was on the show last week. (laughs) But it's just that the super injunction prevents me from naming myself. Hmm. Mm. Doesn't stop me from speculating who you are, though. No, okay. So there is that. Oh, yeah. Speculation uh, no, use... only. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. It's an army hammer situation. Um, <laughs> although, have you heard that his publicist and his agency have dropped him? <laughs> yeah, I bet they were dying to do that as well. But that, suge- that suggests some... Uh, mm, well, there's a great mm. article that was that was reshared. Um I think it was for Vice it was written for originally, uh, about which was written, I think, in 2017, 2018, oh, about, about why Army Hammer, like, they kept pushing him, but he always failed to be a thing. Hmm. Even though, like, he kept getting chance after chance. I mean, of course, he kept getting chance after chance. He's a rich white dude, but, like... Yeah, but that's true. Like, he was in a lot of big roles. Like, he was, he was nearly Batman. But he never um, like he was he was the Lone Ranger, yeah. So it's it's not like he he wasn't in the spotlight, but he he was a Sam Worthington. But he yeah he never got to be a star, mm. um, and you know in retrospect I guess that's just because he couldn't keep his freak under control. Um, yeah, or that, or he kept eating the casting directors. Well, yeah, there is that. Um, also. So. Uh, Oh god. Anyway, anyway. on that shit. Um we've got other nerdy news and geeky gossip enough stuff to fill your brain we've until the inevitable heat death of this universe. Um more on that later. <laughs> uh, we'll be talking One Division and One Division spoilers. We also have an email which apparently ties into One Division, so we'll save that for after the One Division spoilers section. Um but first, Matthew. Yes. If that is your real name. The superb wow. owl. The superb the owl. The superb happened. owl visited us. The superb <laughs> owl LV. <laughs> That's fifty-five what? for those playing along at home in Roman numerals. For those who don't know, which I imagine is at least two thirds of our audience, the superb owl is yeah. a sporting event in the Americas. Yeah, and um, it's still happening. It's still happening. And, you know, that's fine. Sporting events in this pandemic world have been able to go ahead with testing and distancing and et cetera, et cetera. The one thing that sporting events haven't really done, except in a few sort of cases, uh, one most notable one here in the UK, resulting in a bunch of racist abuse from one set of fans that led their entire club to turn around and go, we denounce you. Yeah. Like, you are not our supporters and we will punish everyone because we know who's in what seats and where you were booked. I've had a big problem with football fans as a as a culture for a long time because it's just a very very toxic culture i've 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 been quite lucky to have not really encountered the toxic side of it myself i've grown up in a very i i have 18 branches of the family because you know parents divorce and remarry like it's a sport and um i i've one side of my family i've always been big on football so i've been surrounded by it since i was a kid i've yeah. never hugely gotten into it but I like the atmosphere of a live game, specifically like smaller divisions, like Northwest Counties Division, yeah. Un- Unibon League, things like that. Not the stadium stuff. Stadium stuff can go shit all over itself. I just, if I ever have to sit in the stalls of Old Trafford ever again, I'll cut my knees off because they keep jabbing into the chairs anyway. Yeah. Um, but like seeing things like FC United of Manchester, at a game once in a blue moon, and at the moment, once in whatever moons are further apart because pandemic 
Um, I've had a good time because it's mostly been this sort of sense of camaraderie, warm digging, a uh, warm dissing of the other side, and everybody sort of being in on the joke. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, the rivalry aspect has been to it fun. Fucking violent. Afterwards. Whereas I, we have been at games before where the other, um, the other supporters, the other stand have been nasty, like really uncomfortably nasty, um, and or have been preempted so because we've arrived at an away game to find a line of police between the stalls, yeah. and you're like, that's weird. And then you find out they were either preempting that our lot were going to be a bad, uh, a bad actor, or their lot were notably regularly acting up. And you're like, oh god, that sucks that they even have to do this. We're all here to watch some people play sport and enjoy the thrill of it, not to have a go at each other. This is so strange. Um, but yeah, that that whole I can't remember, remember which team it was now. The UK one toward the end of last year. Where they like managed to have like a controlled thing where the stands were separated and families could be together and people were just yelling racist abuse at the players for taking a knee at the beginning, which has become a tradition in British sports now. Like a lot of people are doing it to to make a point at the beginning. Yeah, and um, people were shouting racist abuse. And it was like, great, your first game out in a million years in a time of a pandemic. You are yeah. privileged enough to have made it in and to have qualified as safe enough to be there, and then you act like a racist twat. Yep. People get are off great. the planet. Get off the planet. Just, I love just them. find a shuttle. Get off the planet. Get in the sea, mate. Get in the sea of another planet. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing about Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, sorry, sorry, in America at the moment is it has had a crowd. And what's really odd is watching American um Twitterers uh talk about it because they had like 30,000 cutouts in one end of the stands. Yeah. Which is weird already. But they also had like 20,000 attendees, something like that, who were, you know, screened and this, that and the other and distance. But when you look at it, you look at the live footage, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And they might be distanced in that stadium. And and the thing, again, in terms of who they let in, they didn't just let in any old bugger. It was mostly like medical workers, people who have been on the front line of dealing with the pandemic. Yeah. It was like, a, a, they didn't pay for it. It was, you're invited. Like, come down, we'll treat you like a goddamn royal We'll, we'll shower you with snacks and halftime stuff. And like, so you'll, we just want to say thank you. You can be in this controlled audience where it's going to be spread out and thinking. But people have got to like get back to their cars, right? Yeah. Go through those tunnels, wait around, shout, scream. Like theatres, for ho- example, yeah. still aren't sure about doing, um, doing pantomimes or concerts because... If you are shouting and responding in the theatre, you are projecting uh, moisture from your mouth. Even if you're wearing a mask, you don't know which kid's going to take their mask off during and start shouting. Like it's all—it's all about droplets getting out into That's the air. That's assuming the kids are wearing masks in the first place. Exactly. Because the, so, the the whole guidance on children wearing masks is vague, to say the least. Vague. But we all know one thing. What's that? The most terrifying thing at this year's Super Bowl wasn't the potential of spread of a rate of infection amongst key workers who we kind of need yeah. to keep everybody yeah. else safe. It was the weekend getting lost in that hall of mirrors during the halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the meme before I saw the, sh- the, sh- the clip and I was just like, yeah. what is this? Is that the weekend? What's he doing? Is this from a music video? Oh, God. There's, I can't remember who it is, but this is brilliant TikTok doing the rounds online. This woman's basically, it, it's a TikTok POV video, and it's POV, the producer briefing the weekend before the Super Bowl show. <laughs> and she's just sort of going like, for health and safety reasons, we, we can't really have anyone else in the Hall of Mirrors. So once you finish the number, you run into the Hall of Mirrors. And, um, okay, uh, we, we, have a, we have a steady cam guy. Been in the business 30 years. He's fantastic. But, you know, like, he has three grandkids. Don't want to take the risk. So you can either bring a friend and we'll give them a GoPro. Or if you you feel comfortable enough, we'll just we'll leave a selfie stick in there. We'll leave a selfie stick in there for you and you can just make it work. <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be disoriented. It's a little scary, but you'll be okay. And then you watch that and then watch the clip and you're like, he looks horrified. He looks really confused as he's running around this golden hall of mirrors. It, it's. I imagine that's what it looks like if you if if you were able to turn the camera 
onto your character's face in Dead by Daylight when you're running away from the killer. <laughs> just absolutely shitting a brick, but at a weird angle. It's like, oh, I, oh, it was, that was, gl- that was glorious. But of course, that's the thing. The Super Bowl is mostly known as a cultural phenomenon outside of the States because of the halftime show. And this year, the, the Prince one from about a decade back was getting shown a lot of love again. Like the one where he mostly did covers and then he did Purple Rain at the very end and they were using a lot of purple lighting on spotlighting on the on the stage for this and the heavens opened during that number and it just pissed it down onto the stage and the rain was being lit up and it was just like, oh my God, that is... I mean, if that's not a sign that like, yeah, this is the best, this is the best halftime show there ever was and ever will be, I'm not sure what was. So that's been getting a lot of love. But it's the trailers. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. It's the trailers in America. People tune in live and you know, around the world they do too. But people watch the halftime show and either side of the halftime show and in between a couple, there's usually one block, but sometimes there's a couple sprinkled throughout the game. Um, you get trailers for uh, commercial stuff for companies like really going ham on trying to sell you some products yeah, because they know like that expensive tens adverts. of millions of people are watching. So yeah. they're like, I mean, some some of the most creative ones have come out. Of most of the ones are the most of the funny ones are the nostalgia driven ones where they just go ham on it. Yeah, they've been really popular the last couple of years. Yeah, the uh, do you remember from about five years ago? I mean, obviously it wasn't popular enough to work because the stores closed down now. But do you remember the Radio Shack one from about five years ago? It's I don't remember employ- the Radio Shack one. It's two employees in Radio Shack and like one's on the phone. He's like, oh, okay, bye. Puts the phone down. The other guy's like, what is it? He's like, the eighties called. They want their store back. And then, like, Hulk Hogan and Chucky and Jason Voorhees and Richard Simmons and all these, like, 80s icons and fictional characters burst in, steal shit, tear up the carpet, like, rob bits and pieces and fuck off with everything from inside the store. And it was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And the end of the advert was basically like, your new improved Radio Shack, this, that, the other, it's showing you, you know, like, selling phone plans and games consoles and X, Y, and Z. But it was like, that's cute. Like, that's a cute... Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. That's fun. Um, and then Steven Spielberg made it into a movie. Uh, uh, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, let's fucking face it. Pretty much. Which, uh, In fact, what came first? The Super Bowl ad or Ernest one. Klein's book? <laughs> Which one came first? That's what I want to know. Mm. He just like, he was half awake, saw that commercial. And then he was like, I'm writing into a book, but it's going to star an incel. Fuck it. Do, do we think uh, we could stomach reviewing Ready Player 2 when they make the movie of that? I cannot wait. To, in the words of Principal Snyder in Buffy the Vampire Slayer's season one, episode nine story, the the uh, the uh, the puppet show, I cannot wait to quote, watch, and mock, and laugh <laughs> at. <laughs> so yeah, I it it's going to be glorious. I've already watched people reviewing the book, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Ready Player Two sounds so fucking awful. It's like the first one, but it's it, it's 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 the Kingsman syndrome. It's like it's like he saw the response to his book and his and the film adaptation and went, "What's the shit people didn't like?" Because I'm just gonna double down on that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh no, that or he's so unaware of his own like tropes that he's he's just gone more in on it and and made a main character even more unlikable um awful awful what isn't awful is the trailers matt the trailers are fun because they do movie trailers well Well, there were i'll say this there were so little of them this year compared to other years yeah that you started our call (laughs) with uh should we do the super bowl trailers and i went trailers you're like yeah and i was like i saw like an ad and one of the sh- yeah. trailers for a thing the, <laughs> and um, i knew i knew of another one but the, i guess it's because you can't really say to people go to the cinema yeah. in the next two months well, everyone you say that <laughs> but the, a lot of these were like coming april <laughs> so um, uh, but enough about my teenage mutant ninja turtles fan fiction what of the trailers <laughs> fucking hell um well, a lot of them were just like small 30 second spots. Uh, and we've got 
of course, Fast 9, or Fast and Furious 9, or F9, which, or whatever yeah, you're which, calling it. 2020's most anticipated which is, blockbuster. <laughs> which is, it's just, it's just cars and family. <clears throat> it's cars and family. They're having a barbecue, right? They're having a barbecue. At there, there is at least one shot of a get-together barbecue. Family. And, and Vin Diesel asking someone if they missed the old life. And then cars. <laughs> cars. And then the fast family. And then cars. Um, It's just 30 seconds of cars. It's like, all right, okay. It's a, it's a Fast and Furious film. Cool. All right. This is the first one in the recent films that The Rock's not in, isn't it? I believe so. Because this is after the supposed beef between him and Vin Diesel. And of course... About, about the studio granting the green light on a Hobbs and Shaw spin-off. So yeah. naturally it's The Rock's fault. It's almost like, I don't know, people like working with that dude or something. Um, it's almost like they don't like working with Vin Diesel. Oh, wait. What? Mm. No. Oh, I, don't wow. know. I don't know. I don't know why that might be. Um, Heart so... take. The only reason he's still involved in the franchise at all is because he's a producer. Yeah. I and that is that. why. Um, so, yeah, that's... I mean, what do you want me to say? It's, it's both does it still have that? Does it still have that weird shot of the car jumping from, like, one cliff to another? Is that still in there? I, that might even be from another Fast and Furious film. I don't even know. Hmm. Yeah, because when we, when we reviewed the trailer for this one, there's the shot where they, like, grapple hook out the front of a car, attach was it that to this a helicopter. One? Was, yeah. that, was that Fast it's, it's and like, Furious 8? No, Fate it's 9, because they, they, like, they, like, attach to a helicopter and then they sw- the car swings oh, to I another island and the trailer cuts out at the last second and we all collectively lose some brain cells and decide whether or not we're buying a ticket or whether or not we're, like... I can't wait for someone else to tell me about that movie. Well, there, the there's a moment in the trailer, like the big action moment in the trailer is someone flips a car onto its two uh, passenger side wheels and drives it roof the first through a bunch of shops. What? And back onto the road on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Um, it, yeah. I'm just telling I'm just telling you now, everyone has been trying to top the Blues Brothers car chase for 40 years. <laughs> And they're not going to do it because the it. simplicity of the thing sells it. And uh, Yeah, like, and... flashy isn't always better. Yeah. That is a great movie. No Borrow it off someone. It. Don't give John Landis money. I mean... But it is a great movie. You want to talk about old movies and great car chases? The French Connection. Oh, yes! Shit! Yes. A, like, tracing, chasing a fucking over, overground um, railway train on a fucking... In a in a car, it's great. Um, great Return movie. of the Pink Panther. <laughs> a Robin Reliant ends up in a swimming pool. It's great. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> and actually, and Revenge of the Pink Panther with the leaky shipyard. There's a chase sequence there in vehicles. It's actually quite funny. Ne- neither of them are like impressive. They're just fun. Yeah. Um, go for that. Speaking uh, of impressive and fun, one trailer I did see. Yes. Was for the Disney Plus show The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. Which is it the made longest, me real- it's the only trailer over 30 seconds. Yeah, the, the web version is 1 minute 30. Yeah. Uh, the televised version, I believe, was just under a minute. Because yeah. it's about how much how much it costs for airtime. Yeah. Traditionally, the, got the traditionally, money for it, it's Disney. Oh, yeah. Traditionally, the movie trailers at the, uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl are 59 seconds long. And then the internet gets, like, a slightly longer version. Yeah. Just after. Um, but, yeah, uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which... First thoughts to, to come out. This is our second trailer. Yeah. For the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. First thoughts to come out of it for me were, oh god, they saved a lot of money on One Division, didn't they? Because <laughs> like One One Division, for all of its impressiveness because and all of its, its visual effects, wizardry <laughs> is is like each episode is yeah, it's a new set, but it's yeah. a new stat static set, and then you have the static set of the sword facility, like the the camp outside. And then you have an on location bit in the sword, like offices in episode four. So far, they've not gone very many places, and it's been very self contained. I mean, for Christ's sake, much... the set for half of number three in the background was ma- obviously painted matte paintings of neighborhoods either side of well, their driveway. How much of that was the the big screens they used for Mandalorian? True. Whereas Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> We got some explosions. Like we got some, some car chases. Money on that shit. We've got a stadium. We've got like it looks a ship, like a shipping yard. We've we've got missiles and air chases through a desert. We've Independence like, 
day style fucking oh. chase, uh, air chase through a rock canyon. Um, <clears throat> Hell yes. Uh, a wonderfully friction, uh, friction, frictiony relationship between uh, Bucky and uh, and Sam, and a reaffirmation that oh Sharon Carter, yeah no, she is a part of this. Yeah, the trailer almost at one point midway through when she sort of arrives and kind of interrupts them, it kind of suggests that perhaps the whatever the plot this is where it's going to go, it's going to become a three hander. At some I think point. I think it's clearly picking up from <clears throat> Civil War. Yeah. With the, with um, Zemo being involved and uh, <gasps> oh, oh, can like... we talk about the fact they avoid showing you Daniel Bruhl properly? Yeah, but you see him from behind. You hear him. He uses the term superheroes, which we've not heard said too often outside of characters taking the piss. It feels like Stark yeah. and Spider Man are like the characters that have said that. But like he said, like there should be no more superheroes, and he's like, "You was it? You didn't think I leave my work unfinished or something like that?" Mm. And you're like, okay. "Okay." Lucy said to me, "We were watching the trailer," and she went, "How? So how did he get out then? Because like end of Civil War, he's pretty much imprisoned." And I went, "Depends on if your jailer is dusted in a snap, or or if you're <laughs> dusted in a snap, or if he or... got dusted." In... Well, two thoughts crossed my mind: either he got dusted. And then all you have to do is have your facility move just a little bit or yeah. change around just a little bit. And then poof, he reappears and he's no longer in prison. Or everyone looking out for him, everyone watching his cell got dusted. So aside from like the basic functions, because it will be one of those places where you're provided with your food. Or yeah, whatever, yeah. Or imagine if he was the only person he spent himself in the company of for five years. Yep. Just stewing over everything that'd be horrible that'd be like really sort of oh shit. I, I imagine they'll cover it um also Bucky... is that no go on. is that sin is it i don't know is it sin where are we talking in the trailer so, so wait, we're talking sin the daughter of the red skull yeah where in the trailer the woman with the red mask Shit! That might be the MCU's version of Sin! <laughs> I never even thought of that! Of course, yeah, because there's like a bunch of sort of acolytes. They're kind of wearing like um, a plain a black mask with, with red markings on it. Apparently they're called the Flag Smashers. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you were never going to do Flag Smasher in the MCU, no, let's face it. No. But a group of terrorists called the Flag Smashers? Sure. I'll buy that. Give yeah. him a ring. Give him a ring leader who's a little bit more camp than the rest of them. We have flag smasher. Um, I mean, because <laughs> where I'm up to in my reread, flag smasher, flag smasher pops up in Spider Man quite a lot during mm. the, the the end of the brain trust, start of the dance slot era, as a bit of a legit threat because of his organization, but mostly joke villain. Yeah. And I forgot that flag smasher gets a bionic arm at one point. Because Matt Gargan's venom bit it off, <laughs> bit his arm off. So you're like, oh, this dude's been through some shit. <laughs> For those who don't know, Flag Smasher is a supervillain who essentially it's 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 a it, it, he, he's a coup for hire, basically, isn't he? Either they have their own political agenda, or people hire them to take down yeah. like governments or or um or commit terrorist atrocities on American soil, usually. Um, <clears throat> and the, <laughs> you know you can have you can have you someone like the Punisher or Captain America up against a character like that and do a serious story of intrigue and subterfuge and and, and you know espionage and domestic terrorism, or you can throw him into a Spider-Man story and it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just, you know, just suddenly, immediately suddenly gets jumped. Suddenly fighting a kid that could leap the, yeah. like, the height of of a tall building <laughs> and web him up against a lamppost. Have we seen? Have we ever seen <laughs> Spider-Man go up against Batroc? Zlipel. We must have done. He must have gone up against Batroc. Zilly Pierre. He must have done at some point. Or is that? Can we take a moment? Or is that I basically think... just Tarantula? I oh, I do love Tarantula. Though. <laughs> um, can we take a moment to acknowledge that I think Cap might have had the most of his rogues gallery appear in the MCU as of this series? Think about it. I am Iron Man's Iron Man. We've had Justin Hammer, who's you know debatably is an Iron Man antagonist yeah, in the yeah. comics. Um, we've had. Ironmonger, yeah, uh, who who was sort of a hybridized version of of Obadiah Stane and the Ironmonger and and other yeah. versions of a character. So that's two. We've had um, 
Uh, Whiplash. Whiplash, who was Slash technically the Crimson, the Crimson Dynamo. Dynamo, so it's only one, yeah. really. Uh, we've had Aldrich Killian, who was kind of changed to be just more like an ex- extremist. Well, also, like using in, character in extreme in, in the comic, he's he's literally in it for a page. Yeah, so like, like well, so... I'll, I'll give it that. It's like extremist as a as a as a a force to be for sure, whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of it off the top of my head in terms of Iron Man antagonists. Well, they they've done a version of the Mandarin. Now, yeah. Now, to be fair, the Mandarin is rocking up. So, okay, that's even if we discount so... Kingsley, that that's five because the Mandarin is coming up in Shang Chi. Although, do you notice the cast announcement last month? They didn't mention him. No, and yeah, it's like they've gone. Forget about that. It's like, huh. Or maybe, um, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's more of a sting, more of a tease for the future of the Shang Chi franchise rather than Perhaps. the topic of this film. Um. So yeah. So we've had that. Like. Thor's had a fair few. Thor's had uh, Loki, Laufey, Curse, Malekith, um, Hela, uh, the Executioner. Yeah. I mean, obviously he was a bit of a heel, but, you know, Scourge was still in it and he was a bad guy. Um, uh, it's kind of it for Thor villains, isn't it? Thor-centric villains to show up in... I mean, we, yeah. we had, we had, we had Lorelei in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, that's true. Um, so she popped up in that. Seven Thor baddies. The Destroyer? Up. Did you say the Destroyer? Yeah, the Destroyer. Eight. So we've had eight yeah. Thor-specific villains, like, play a part. Yeah. Um. Then, uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So that's, okay, Thor's probably the highest at the moment. Then take a look at Cap. So Red Skull. Yeah. Arnim Zola. Yeah. Um, Baron Von Strucker in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Zemo in Civil War and yep. Captain America Winter Soldier. Batroc Zilipiar <laughs> in, uh, in, in Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, helping deliver one of the most badass things that Steve ever did. Yeah. Dropping his shield and just drop kicking him in the face. <laughs> um, crossbones. Yeah. In uh, in um, Civil War. Civil War and, and, and uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, ooh, so he's six. Six to Thor's eight. Does US Agent count? I mean, US Agent's not always a villain, are they? They're more of a... No, no. no. US Agent's like a, a hero, but like shady. Yeah. Um, the flag the flag smashers have got to count. I mean, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. I know it's not flag smasher, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, it is, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, is that seven? And it would, it would come up to eight if Sin is one of the flag if smashers. If Sin, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Cap Cap's doing all right. He's doing okay. Isn't that weird to think as well? Like the the sort of the least known rogues galleries compared to say your Spider Man or, yeah. or Hulk, Hulk even. Like Hulk's got sort of a more visually distinct rogues gallery that people are sort of like, Oh yeah, there's that one with the big head and there's the oh, there's blue the one. The abomination and... the leader, and that's pretty much it, I think, for Hulk villains. And even then, he's not been the leader, has he? No. He's just, just I mean, like Nelson's like... head like wibbling a little bit and they've even never like... picked it up. Even thinking of Hulk, like Hulk Rose Gallery from the comics, like there's a bomb, there's the leader, a bomb, a bomb's not really a villain. Started as a villain, right? Or is it I'm more that sure, Hulk thing of like we've got Jones, to, we've got to control him, we've got to control him and stop him from going on a rampage? Possibly. Um, you could say who who can say Doc Hulk, Samson? Although he's, he's not a villain, villain, but he's a Hulk enemy. Thunderbolt Ross has been is in the Thunderbolt films. Thunderbolt Ross, yeah. Um, uh, the Hulk Buster. Okay, no, we're stretching the Hulk now. Bust. <laughs> the Hulk Bust. You know, the Hulk Buster. The Hulk Gargoyle. Bust. Uh, Gargoyle's not been in the films, but I take Gargoyle. The Hulk Bus. <laughs> <laughs> it just pulls up. It's like, get on, Bruce. <laughs> it's like, what? What? What is this? I don't understand. Just get him on. Nothing's get him on wrong. The Hulk Bus. Then they get him in there and they just drive him off a cliff. Um. <laughs> It's like the start of Fortnite, but you're just dropping Bruce Banner into a crater. Don't forget to thank the driver. Um, <laughs> don't forget to smash the driver. Uh, so yeah, it's today's Falcon episode of Hulk Bus brought to you by G Fuel. Um, Falcon it looks the Winter good. Soldier looks good. Surprising no one. <laughs> I thought you said the Hulk and the Winter Soldier then for a second. <laughs> Hulk and the Winter Soldier. Hulk and the Winter Soldier. Now that would be a um, very different show. Weird. My weird comment is, even though it set up their relationship. 
I'd like to see some more of Sam and Bucky. I feel like it, the trailer was more, look at the scale of this thing. This is Game of Thrones level, like, But I, I think it is also, like, setting up their sort of uneasy, like, relationship. It's almost like Bucky's so. not... Not Bucky's not jealous of Sam being cat, but he's like, you aren't ready to live up to Steve. Well, I guess yet. it also like, I don't think either of them want to be cat. Hence the series so, being called The Falcon yeah. and the Winter Soldier, and also the fact that there's going to be a state-sponsored Captain America, whether they call him yeah. Captain America. Oh or no, not. the U.S. agent. It'll totally be U.S. agent again. Have you noticed how the trailers I mean, have been downplaying him? The trailers US have been agent, downplaying but... him. Do you think you know, the, that in universe they'll that the government will call him Captain America? Maybe, maybe. I mean, they've been downplaying him in the trailers. You see, like the same shot of him running out to the yeah. stadium, and then the poster that came out with the trailer the other day. He's front and center, but he's like shadowy over his face. It's like they're really making a point of anybody. Uh, anybody notice the Captain America looking motherfucker? Here? <laughs> mm-hmm. I bet you all got some questions, don't you? Uh, Bucky's arm's looking slick. It's the same one he got in Wakanda. It's yeah. just sort of got a bit of a paint job. It's like a black and gold colour scheme overall. Loving now. it. Loving a slick arm. <laughs> Bucky wearing a lot of sleeves this time. Because so it's many t- sleeves. Though they have the budget, it's a TV budget. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not CGI I mean, an arm in. It's a hell of a TV budget, but... <clears throat> oh, God, yes. You when do you think do we're a lot gonna... of that arm with prosthetics anyway. Mayhaps. And makeup. When do you think we're going to get uh, another look at Loki? I think... I think like the way they've done this, obviously Super Summer. Bowl was timing, but probably probably during the run of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, yeah. I think we'll get another look at it. Because the way this falls, it starts March 19th. So the way this falls... God, that's not far off, is it, really? There'll be like a week between... Uh, there'll be like a fortnight between the end of Division and the start of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, that's good. Disney Plus giving us that sweet, sweet excuse to tune into a TV once a week. <laughs> well, Disney Plus is also getting another Premier Access release. Yes. Uh, which was trailered at the Super Bowl, which is, of course, uh, Raya in the Last Dragon. Yeah. Which, um, uh, again, is, is them is them counting their losses. Um, yeah. And going, look, <clears throat> we, we've got these films. We need to put yeah. them out. I think otherwise, we're gonna, we, otherwise we're going to well. bottleneck way too much. Um, yeah, well, that's that's that weird middle ground that the state United States are in, where they're like, "Oh, it's yeah. coming out in theaters." You're like, "No, don't do that yet. Mm. You're you're as bad as us. You have the most deaths worldwide. <laughs> as bad. Maybe don't do that. Yeah. So." Uh, just because Biden's in doesn't mean it's fixed now. Like, you have to do your part, yeah. you fucking idiots. Um, yeah, a lot yeah. of this stuff is still getting advertised with cinema releases. So. But does it look good? It looks good. It looks <clears throat> very good. Kelly Marie Tran getting a due. Yes. So, I'm intrigued by it. I don't know if I'll drop the Premier Access for it. But we'll see. It looks, it looks good. I think Premier Access is just too expensive. Yeah, if it but, was if it was a normal rental price of like say, say thirteen ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine, mm. then you can kind of justify it as I yeah. Mean, I, I dropped fifteen quid on Wonder Woman eighty four. Like I can eat that again, I suppose. Yeah, but, but we'll see. Twenty nine ninety nine was Mulan's tag, and no was that was it twenty nine ninety nine over here? Twenty. Uh, it was twenty nine ninety nine over here because it was it was Fuck it, conversion for dollars was like different. It sort of because I think I think in the states it was like thirty dollars, so over here you'd imagine it'd be like, you know, uh, twenty four, twenty five quid, and it wasn't. So, for that noise, for it, um, especially because Mulan then became available on physical media you can keep, um, a month later, and also it was garbage. and then a couple of weeks after that it came out on Disney Plus. So. <laughs> Also, it was crap. It was um, awful. It was fucking dire. You, you, you were forced to watch Beauty and the Beast live action the other day. Fucking hell! It why is. did you? Why? Why? Listen, Kanisha just wanted me to suffer. Did Kanisha sit there and go, "Look, for three, four years now, this has been tearing at my soul, <laughs> and I need to share the pain." So she turns around, turns on the TV, and you're like, "What is it? Is everything okay?" And then suddenly, fucking. 
It's just Pit, not... pitch corrected Emma it's Watson why, invaded your why home would for you two cast hours. Emma Watson. Not only can she not sing the parts, but she's not very good in it. <laughs> but hey, isn't it showing the 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 awfulness of the patriarchy back in that fictional version of France? No, where they hate that a girl reads. She should be teaching people to read. And then you see the school kids walk by mocking her, and they're a mix of girls and boys. The film doesn't know what it's trying to say. It's really weird. It should have just she's been an outcast. She's an outcast. She's an outcast because she invented a, a a washing machine that actually is kind of ingenious, but the they hate her because of it. Machine. Yeah, like it's in, weird. In the, in the original film, Belle doesn't think everyone in her town is a, is a dickhead. She's just like I don't know. She's a dreamer. She's like there's got to be something more, right? Surely. And the town is just like, oh, she's always got her head in the clouds, that one. What's she like? They don't think she's an idiot. They're just like, well, oh, Belle, she's lovely, but she, she's not quite all there. Whereas in this one, it's like, we fucking hate you. And she's like, well, I fucking hate you too. And you're like, wow, the opening sequences of this movie are just introducing me to a very unpleasant world. Yeah. I hope she escapes to a magical land of, oh, the beast fucking hates her. Great. She fucking hates the beast. Love I'm loving the positivity it's, of this it's movie. Not, it's, it's so not much good. fun. It's bad. It's, it's a- bad. It's actually bad. It is it's very, very bad indeed. Thanks. I hate it. Um it's it's, it's not yeah. good. There's not I, I oh. can't I can think of two redeeming qualities. And, and they they're are, getting a spin off. <laughs> and they are Luke Evans. <clears throat> yeah. And Kevin Klein. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not going to give it to Josh Gad just because, yeah, he's fine and everything. And, but, like, the, the it's, it is like, it's a bit like the Rise of Skywalker, like, the, the kiss at the end of that. And it's like, it's just so fucking. It's been tainted weak. because they signposted it beforehand. Yeah. Because they made a point of saying it will feature Disney's first ever out and proud gay character. And he's And then not you watch really? it, and he's not out. And he's not open about his sexuality. He's in an abusive um, relationship where he's obviously like in love with Gaston, but not receiving anything back. And then at the end, he makes eye contact with a dude who makes eye contact back and they dance a bit. Yeah, it's just... Now, had they not done any publicity prior to the movie about it, and we saw it, I think we all were watching and gone, oh, that's, that's kind neat. of... That's yeah. neat. That's cool. But instead, they bigged it up, and then you watch it and you go, oh, right, yay, your first yay. out gay character isn't really out. And not only that, he's in an abusive, codependent yeah. relationship. And not only that, him and a guy dancing together is played as a bit of a joke at the end. So... Yeah, and also, in the wide shot, immediately after that moment, they're not together. Yeah. So there you go. I there know, you go. because I was looking. Um... <laughs> I was looking and furiously masturbating. Anyway, we're fucking getting off track here and it's all your fault again. Um, uh, what else? What else did we have trailers for? Oh, we got another spot for Nobody, the Bob Odenkirk does John Wick. Uh, yeah. Flick, which looks great. Um, it's, it's, apparently it's so, that's out in April. It's so strange that Liam Neeson in 2008, 2009 started a movement that hasn't stopped yet. No. Which is well, old white actor who shouldn't be in action flicks does action flick and it looks pretty fucking good. Considering <laughs> the 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 sort of subject matter and the, the people involved, the producers involved, it yeah. would not surprise me if this is sort of the stealth John Wick spin off. Yeah. I get that from the I get that from the poster. I get that from the poster, you know, the one of it's yeah. like close on his face and he's being punched and, and stuff and he's being yeah. grappled and punched. Because it looks like the Parabellum poster. Yeah. The where where he's surrounded by all the different guns and he's just sort of stood in the middle looking forward and Yeah. I mean, cause because the, the plot of nobody, from what I can tell, is the house he he and his wife and his daughter, their house gets robbed. He just fuck all about it. It drives a wedge between the family because they yeah. feel like he didn't protect them. And then he starts like tracking down the people who did it in a way that suggests maybe he has either training he's never talked about or they're going for like a sleeper agent kind of thing. Well, no, where, they, like, he's, where, in, like, he's remembering the, stuff. The other trailer that he's retired from. Right, they downplayed that this yeah. time then. Mm, yeah, okay. that's, it's in, that's in the first trailer. 
Okay. Okay. So he's he's been part of that world and got out. Right. And okay. Oh, so that the, I was going to say because if they're just mad at him for not defending the family, even though we all know now, thanks to the way the legal system can be yeah. manipulated, uh, that if you ever get but the way the robbed, in, if you ever it... get robbed in your home, you need to do nothing and then report about it because if you attack the person who's intru- intruding in your ho- home, you then get in trouble. Because well, no, not if you're white and they're black and you shoot them dead. America's fucked, everyone. Um, so... case you didn't know, America is fucked, and the rest of the world ain't that much better. Um, I, the way the trailers make it seem is that, that his family don't know about his life <clears throat> before that. So oh, then they're being a bit harsh. Yeah, oh, I think, come on. I think, but, but you know, it's <laughs> the, the man's difficult. fifty-eight. Come on, it's going to be difficult <laughs> to, to to work out until we see the actual film. But it looks. He's it 58, looks... he's in several different wigs for all of his jobs. Give him a break, all right? I just I just think it's going to be neat to see Bob Odenkirk in this kind of film. I think it's just neat to see Bob Odenkirk, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, to be um, fair. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> this looks all right. Um, <laughs> we have also got a trailer for M. Night Shyamalan's next film. Yet yeah, old. Old. Which sounds like the... Because t- it's, it's based on a graphic novel called The Sandcastle. Sandcastle, Sandcastles. I don't know. Um, where a family end up on a beach, uh, like a remote tropical island area, and discover that they're all aging rapidly over yep. the course of a day. So it's it's this whole thing of like, it's a supernatural horror, essentially, is, yep. is the idea. But him calling the film version old. Old. Sounds like he's trying to do a thinner. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like he's trying to go, oh, I really wouldn't hope it be. He's not wouldn't it to do be. Wouldn't it be. Thinner, that's not wouldn't well, it's, it's weird, because it sort of makes it sound like he's going, aren't, isn't the concept of being old terrifying? Yeah, You're that's like, what I was thinking about the trailer. I was like, this is a movie in which getting old is the worst thing. I suppose I mean, getting old over the course of a day is pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah. Oh, that's frightening, but just calling it old is just very... Where it is? I, I can imagine an older audience going, yeah. fuck you! Fuck you. <laughs> Do you know what I, I mean? Get, I get the sort of weirdness of like, um, <clears throat> and the sort of weirdness of like your kids disappear from eyesight and then they come back as teenagers like yeah. two minutes later. That's creepy. But like, just getting <laughs> more on one division later. Hey, um, um, <laughs> to be fair, that's in full view. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I like. I, do you know what? It, do you know what it sounds like? It would do better as the what? What the best adaptation of the Sandcastles would be? What's that? An, an episode of Twilight Zone. Yeah. It sounds like it'd make a great 45 minute teleplay that would be really interesting and really creepy and unnerving and you could delve into the idea of mortality and what it means to live to your fullest with the time you have and you could do some really interesting stuff with some great actors where you're casting like three or four different people to play each character and you really play off of that as an acting exercise it could be fascinating because you could have all these different people workshop together so that they're all very obviously playing the same person at different stages of their life and their chemistry with the various co-stars matches up and like, you could do a really interesting thing with that. Or M. Night Shyamalan could take it and write, direct, and produce a film adaptation and call it Old. I, I think, yeah, I can't, I think that's the thing you I can can't get excited because it's him. The thing you can say about a lot of M. Night Shyamalan films is that they make great episodes of The Twilight Zone because mm. they're all 45 minutes of story stretched out to feature length and none of them have a third act. Um, what was the best so... thing about Split? McAvoy's performance. Anything else? Nope. Nope. Great. So what you're saying is there should have been a 45 minute telenovela. <laughs> I about actually, ele- probably just shouldn't have done Split because yeah, all right, McAvoy's performance is great, but the sort of perpetuating the myth, of, yeah, of, of dissociative identity disorder, which is still not like necessarily a properly recognised, yeah, disorder, uh, yeah, it's pr- problematic to say the least. And then the motherfucker went and made glass. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, god and we all cried about that um what else other trailers there were a couple that i couldn't watch because they were region locked like um cbs are doing a series called clarice which is a sequel to Silence oh of the Land. shit i've heard about this this is the one where they've they've legally had the rights to make yep. this for about 10 years <laughs> they've got the which rights is why to... several characters from those novels didn't appear in Hannibal 
and why Hannibal couldn't outright adapt Silence of the Lambs into its narrative, which I yeah. think was some of the showrunners had expressed interest in hoping to they do for its to last do that. season. That was, the, was apparently the plan. The last they, season of Hannibal would have been... Seasons was to yeah. do Silence of the Lambs, <clears throat> but they only ended up getting three seasons. Yeah. So they managed to do Red Dragon, but they didn't get a chance to do Silence of the Lambs. So maybe there was a clause that meant that if they got that far, they could have it. For, Maybe. for rights because but it's this a Brian fe- Fuller show so it's never going to get that far <laughs> yeah so so Clarice features Clarice Clarice it features like the shitty cop it features like the sexist guard yeah. it, it's basically like and, oh and Buffalo Bill they have Buffalo Bill so it's some what, characters don't know so it's some characters from Silence of the Lambs in a show <laughs> Where they're never going to be able to do anything to do with Hannibal Lecter. They're never going to be able to ad- adapt any of well, the other the, books. The, the premise... Books, except in that really butchered uh, ITV does Miss Marple story kind of way. Where they just really fuck it up to for the sake of fucking it up. The premise is that it's set a year after Silence of the Lambs. Oh, fuck. Right off. And it's... like Somehow it, Buffalo Bill survived. It basically <laughs> sounds like a procedural, but Clarice Starling is the main character. So, po- pointless. No, Pointless is a shitty game show. I've never got it. <laughs> um, I've never understood it. I've never understood. I've never. I've watched like ten minutes of it. and I'm like, I don't. Get it's it. fine. I'm glad um, it makes people happy, which is probably what we'll say about Clarice when it comes out. I'm glad yeah. it makes people happy. Yeah, but, it's but it's no uh, Hannibal, and that's what really we want more of. It's um, so weird that there are studios fighting for the rights of parts of a book. Yep, and other studios getting the rights to the rest of it. Like, yep. fucking what? That's so bizarre. Like, imagine, like, we've got the rights to do Lord of the Rings as a TV epic. We're going to do three seasons. Each season is going to adapt each of the books. And uh, we're going to stick as close to the source material. Each season's going to be ten episodes. And, um, oh, oh, the Gandalf prequel over at HBO. No, we, we have nothing to do with that. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Gandalf will not be featuring in our Lord <laughs> of the Rings TV show. Why? Oh, because he's in that Gandalf prequel that HBO are making. Uh, ours is no, yeah, ours is set. Ours is set in the the Shire and 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 Mount Doom and 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 uh, Minas Tirith. They all show up. Middle Earth. No, 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 no. Uh, the HBO guys own the rights to the name Middle Earth, so theirs is set in Middle Earth. Uh, well, you ours, use- ours is set in a world where, um, I mean. I mean, we're not going to say it's Middle Earth. The HBO show have Middle Earth. Fucking hell. Um, oh, I... oh Sa- Saruman. Saruman will be in our show. Yes, but he'll be Saruman the Puce. Because those guys the have got the, those guys have bought the rights um, to having wizards who are the white. So. Um, <laughs> fuck me. Well, you joke about this. <laughs> using Lord of the Rings. Oh, but Amazon God. Prime are making that Lord of the Rings show. Yeah. Which is not Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's probably going to be called Lord of the Rings, yeah. but it's all set in the Second Age, mm-hmm. way before anything that mm-hmm. happens in Lord of the Rings actually happens, apart from, of course, the stuff in the prologue with the Last Alliance of Men and Elves, which is the end of the Second Age. <sighs> now, if they called it Middle Earth, the Age of Man, I think we'd all go, oh, it's a Lord of the Rings thing. Okay, no, people wouldn't they, have done that. But they're going to call it Lord stupid, them. Christopher. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Do you think it'll have sexy Shelob in it? <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. I've got that game now um, on PS Plus. The the uh, Shadow, Shadow of, of War. Mordor. And I've gone nowhere oh, Shadow near of War, it. Sorry, I've gone nowhere near it because I enjoyed Shadow of Mordor so much, and the I... fact that it the fact that it was like. They're clearly this is set in the world of the films because of the designs and and everything like like Gollum yeah. is Gollum and the voice actor who plays him plays him like Andy Serkis and it's yeah. like okay this is interesting and then I watched the trailer for Shadow of War and I was like okay so Shelob turns into a human which is bullshit because Shelob is like the first and only pure spider demon thing of this generation in the books. Because it's the it's the it's the daughter of Ungoliant, 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 yeah, Ungoliant, yeah. Ungoliant, which is which is this hideous that. fucking spider creature from the previous age and everything, yeah. who is believed to have become <clears throat> so hungry she eventually devoured herself. Yeah, so pure beast, not 
spider that has magical, magical, uh, mag- magical, magical, mystical, mystical powers that has masturbatory powers to turn into sexy spider woman in gown. Mm. But also the she lob that you see in the game as a spider looks so distinctly different from the she lob <laughs> we see in Return of the King. Almost, but not quite entirely unlike she lob. <laughs> it's like if one person <laughs> drew a spider. And another person drew a spider based on other people's description of what a spider looks like. Yep. That's what the Shadow of War one looks like compared to the That's a Spider from the films. Hey, so it's I, like. I found out where the Shadow uh, of War plot goes, and I'm like, I kind of want to play that because that sounds fucking wild, <laughs> but also, no thanks. Have you heard that this week, uh, Warner Brothers uh, and the arm of Warner Brothers, Warner's Interactive, that worked on that game, or. or distributed it oh yeah they're, uh, they're trying to patent the nemesis system which is why it's not booked yeah. anywhere else yeah yeah which is so fucking ridiculous bullshit. it's bullshit but anyway why are we talking about shadow of war and lord of the rings we're supposed to be talking about superb owl trailers and we've done it we've finished them uh well it's not the only oh, thing no, we we've released oh i forgot one. Oh yeah coming to america oh yeah yeah remember that film with eddie murphy that you all fell in love with in the 80s it was pretty pretty funny you know kind of offensive kind of out there great performances great comedic timing eddie murphy and his co-stars get into um arsenio hall specifically get into like flex their comedy chops as different characters of different races races and ethnicities in a way that was more observational comedy but obviously like now you know maybe maybe don't do that well it's that again yeah but they're old yeah there you go now to be fair now to be fair eddie murphy and arsenio hall do not look any older than they did. No, that's years terrifying. Ago. Like they're, they're, they're just almost like, oh, this is just is this is a deleted scene from coming to America. Um, <laughs> you but, guys filmed this at the same time as the old yeah. one, right? <laughs> Surely you did. That's fucking um, scary. But yeah, it's that he's coming to America to get his son to take him back to take over the throne, and there's a joke about Wakanda in it. There <laughs> we go. There we go. If you loved Eddie Murphy's uh, white Jewish character in the barbershop from SNL that he then did in Coming to America, this is the movie for you and just you. Yeah. Um, do you know what else is a movie that uh, released some teasers during the Superb Owl tournament, but also oh. is a movie just for a very rabid set of fans? You're going to tell me and I'm going to hate myself because I know exactly what you're going to say. And I'm still huh? going into this conversation saying, huh? tell me, Christopher. Tell me of Zack Snyder's Justice Yeag. Um, <laughs> we here at Big Damn Cast are committed to eventually watching it, but we won't be rushing and we'll be looking for the cheapest option imaginable. That being said, when it ends up coming out in the UK in some form, we're probably going to bite the bullet out of morbid Can you curiosity. imagine watching four hours of Zack Snyder's Justice League? <clears throat> oh, yeah, because, hours of it. because he's doubled down now on, no, it's a film. It's not a mini series. It's a film. Four hours of Zack Snyder's undiluted id. I just I can't. Well, over the weekend he released footage of Steppenwolf uh, fighting the Why? Amazonians, fighting the Amazonians in the flashback. It looks like it's very much the same as part of the sequence from the theatrical release of the movie, except Steppenwolf is now ninety percent more on top of the original ninety percent. CGI. Um, he's very spiky. CGI. He's very spiky, and none of his design looks remotely as interesting or fun as any of Steppenwolf's comic book looks. But sure, you do you, hun. Um, and it looks from this footage of the editing suite where he's working on the final cut of the movie right now. It looks as though the the video he shows of his monitors. The video is black and white. So it doesn't necessarily suggest that this part of the film will be black and white. I mean, it probably is. The original trailers that we oh, saw for God. this cut when it was announced and stuff they've shown since sort of suggests that dream sequences and flashbacks may be in black and white. But what's oh, interesting is the footage hell. is in 4.3. I'm not sure why this is carrying on from those trailers. I'm not sure why the footage being in 4.3 is... Is work like I don't get it. Imagine if Zack Snyder releases this four hour long magnum opus in a square bracket format and it's black and white and four three. Now, 
Is it black and Why white and four three? Because he's a faux artsy guy. He's a dude bro pretending to be artsy. Yes. Or is it because if you cut out a third of the screen and make it black and white, your CGI costs for all your additional footage will be halved down to the fact you won't have to do second pass texturing because CGI... You make something in CGI, folks, and it doesn't look like HD sharp. You make that footage black and white and it looks great because it just fits in with the, the contrast of the darker colour scheme. For example, see the Maxine Peak episode of um, ah, Black Mirror, for example. <clears throat> Bunch of robot dog like tripod things. The episodes in black and white, they look fucking great. Um, <clears throat> like, maybe that's why, because you won't have to texture it. And also there'd be less screen for them to have to render. As dumb as that sounds, I wouldn't be surprised if that was how HBO were like, fine, fine, we'll give you $78 million extra budget to work on this piece of shit. As long as it brings us back the money, Zach. I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, I'll, I want it. You can't have it. Well, what if I, uh, I want, I want, I want 140 million. We're not going to give you that. You'd have to make it black and white and cut off a third of the screen for the whole film to do that, Zach. I'll do it. We'll give you 78 million. Okay. No, but- Chris, Chris. Matthew? This was already finished, remember? Remember, this was already done. I am I'm I'm happy for people who <laughs> want who want to watch this. I'm happy for people who hated the first version and think this might improve their experience. <laughs> I really am. I wish I could take off my l- logical glasses for this, guys, but I can't. <laughs> HBO Max want your money. Zack Snyder is not a true artist. He's a twat. <laughs> Four hours. Is Chris. it unfair? Is it unfair he didn't get to make his film because he had to leave due to a personal tragedy? <laughs> of course that's unfair. But do you know what's more unfair? The personal tragedy. That's more unfair. It's not that unfair that he had to leave behind a movie that would have paid him very wow. handsomely to have been a part of already. And the fact that he got the sole directing credit for the theatrical cut for Directors Guild of America reasons means that he will have got his full fee as negotiated for that movie. I don't feel bad for a man who makes a shit Justice League movie and comes away with several tens of millions of dollars as a fee for it. I don't feel bad for someone like that. Now, he wants us to feel even worse because he keeps giving us glimpses of this thing, including footage and context for jared leto's joker who is appearing in this cut of the film apparently the joker was always going to appear in justice league um oh yeah because it was already made. finished well Remember? here's the thing it seems that the nightmare beginning with a k sequence from batman very superman dawn of jaundice um apparently that was going to carry over into justice league now he might not be fibbing when he says that it was already finished... I mean, no, he, I mean, that it, makes sense, yeah. <clears throat> when, what he might mean when he says the film's already finished is he might mean, oh, no, the, the version I was allowed to make is already finished. It's just minus a couple scenes that I wanted That's to do. a big fucking caveat, Zach. <clears throat> but keep in mind, when it was first in production, whilst Batman vs Superman was coming out, Justice League was two films. And after Batman vs Superman came out, they were made to reduce it to one film. So the version that came to cinemas may have been a couple scenes short of how he was going to bolt together this story into one film. But it sounds like this four hour cut and all these reshoots and all this extended stuff, including Joe Maganiello reprising the role of Deathstroke for a scene. So he actually gets a scene in a film um, as this character has been signed on to play for four years. Yeah. Um, It sounds like he's basically trying to make the closest he can to the two hour the two part film he wanted to release initially um for which i'm very thankful wait wait so it's gonna be eight hours long then no 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 this this four hours is the two part justice league he planned initially before he was told to make it one film so for that i'm very grateful because four hours i'm is not better. it means no. i'm gonna have to sit through four hours Cause, no because four hours is better than five plus fucking hours of what would have been justice league part one and justice league part two um just to reiterate for any of our new viewers, we love these characters. We wish we wanted to watch this movie. We wish we liked the first one and we're excited for this I one. I mean, I am so curious. 
Oh yeah. Oh, as a as a fan of films and of the world of world of film business and how things are made and what gets cut and whatnot. I am so morbidly fascinated with this. Yeah, and it, it is morbid. It is a mm. morbid fascination. Like it's, it's <clears throat> like rubbernecking by a crash scene. Like we've seen, we've now seen. Speaking of rubbernecking by a crash scene, we've now seen footage of uh, pictures of Jared Leto's Joker, who is tattooless, seemingly without grills, and is wearing a long coat and hood, and has long hair down to his sort of his collarbone. Yeah, it's because they've just filmed it recently. And that's what Jared Leto looks like now. Well, no, he 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 either went through some prosthetics for this, or or cut his eyebrows down and everything again, because it, it the face is the same, just no tattoos, no grill. Well, yeah, it's still Jared um, Leto's face. Yeah, but he this is a man who normally <laughs> walks around with a full beard and and eyebrows and stuff and oh, okay. DMs underage fans, um, <laughs> sex. So uh, allegedly, but proven. Um, so <sighs> we'll get into that in a second. Cause, yes, yeah, because the hypocrisy at play here at DC is fucking disgusting. So, oh, yeah, DC Studios, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Zach has confirmed, here's the quote, uh, that the the new look for the Joker uh, is because he is part of a nightmare sequence, continuing on from the nightmare sequences of Batman v Superman, meaning in this film, Batman will still be having visions of this apocalyptic future. It looks like the Joker is in a cell, like a blank stone cell. Uh, it's in black and white, but the walls and the lighting sort of make it look kind of like the underground bunker that Batman gets taken to in the nightmare sequence. Um, <clears throat> Vanity Fair broke the news. With our best look yet, the Joker's new style also confirmed the character will be involved with the nightmare timeline, first glimpsed in BVS, according to Games Radar. They report that the sequence will include Joker, who they describe as the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And that the vision will show to Ben Affleck's Batman the consequences of failing to prevent Darkseid's invasion of Earth. It's also confirmed that Joker will speak to Batman for the first time in the DCEU. That's a fucking sentence, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. The cool thing about this scene is that it's Joker talking directly to Batman about Batman, Snyder explained. It's Joker uh, analysing Batman about who he is and what he is. That's the thing I also felt like fans deserve from the DC Universe. That is to say, the Jared Leto Joker... Sorry, the bare minimum that we want is for Batman and Joker to share a fucking scene together. Why is yeah. it taking this long? Um, that's the thing I also felt like the fans deserved. The thing is, that is to say, the Jared Leto Joker and the Ben Affleck Batman, they never really got together. It seemed uncool to me that we would make it all the way through this incarnation of Batman and Joker without seeing them come together. He added, and you can tell me if this is right because you've seen the extended cut of this piece of shit. That scene, uh, this scene explains why Bruce had the Joker card taped to his gun that you see in Batman v Superman. Do we see a Joker card taped to a gun that Batman wields in Batman <sighs> v Superman? Not that I can recall, but it was a, there was a lot going on. Oh, in the nightmare sequence. It's in the nightmare sequence because in the nightmare sequence he's got guns. I was going to say uh... he's not got guns. He's not got guns in that film. The yeah, bat, the Batmobile blasts the fuck out of people, but in that nightmare yeah. sequence, he's got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Snyder then explained, because he can't stop fucking talking, how Robin's death at the hands of the Joker would factor into the storyline, while also suggesting we won't ever see this play out fully, as there's unlikely to be a sequel. I'd always wanted to explore the death of Robin, and if there was ever going to be a next movie, which of course there probably won't be, I wanted to do a thing where in flashbacks we learn how Robin died, how Joker killed him, and burned down Wayne Manor, and that whole thing that happened between he and Bruce. Right, so so, so hang on, the Joker knows who Batman is. Is that true in Suicide Squad, then? Which is set after Batman v Superman. I'm so tired. <laughs> He explained I'm that the rest so of the story He explained how the rest of the storyline would reveal how they became like this, how Joker hurt Batman in a way that no one has really. Other than losing his parents, it was probably the most significant personal injury to his life. Okay. It arrives on HBO Max in just over a month's time. Uh... Oh, Games Radar suggests check out how to watch the DC movies in order for the ultimate movie marathon. Uh, oh 
Oh god, they've made an entire article. They've made an entire article where they list the theatrical release, chronological theatrical release of the films, then the films that are yet to come out, and then the release of chronologically when they happened and how they recommend you watch them. Oh my god, go to uh, hell. I recommend you don't. Go to hell. I recommend we talk about Oh my else god! Else. Oh my god, Matt, this is actually part of the recommendation for the chronicle- chronological rewatch. No. Wonder Woman, start with Wonder Woman's flashbacks, 1914 to 1918. Then what? watch Wonder Woman 1984, then Man of Steel, then Batman v Superman. Then Wonder Woman's modern day scenes. Are you fucking kidding me? Then Suicide Squad. Then Birds of Prey. Then Justice Are League. You then Aquaman. Are fucking kidding then me? That's insane. It's saying you want to skip to the World War One stuff in Wonder Woman, then skip back to the present day stuff four movies later. Mm hmm. Chris. Let's talk about WandaVision, please. Please, for the love of fuck. Let's please. talk about WandaVision. Spoilers! Spoilers ahoy! Spoilers ahoy! Spoilers, spoilers for WandaVision episode 5 and all preceding episodes up to that point. If you are listening to this after uh, Friday the uh, 12th of February, you may mock and laugh at the theories we're about to postulate because they're probably all incorrect. But if you're listening to that before you've watched the sixth episode of WandaVision or you're just curious to see how much we got right or wrong, Pull up a chair. Uh, Pull up a what happened? What happened in One Division um, on a very special episode, as was the name of the episode, which I thought was a great fucking title. On a very special episode. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. It's like okay. What do we think? What was the? What happened, Matt? What was the plot? Well, there's two kids now. Yeah, the kids are a handful, mm. but they're even more of a handful when they can age up at will. And suddenly become older. and But then also Vision's noticing that there's some weird stuff going on. And and then outside of the hex, um, Monica Rambeau is, is getting more and more... Uh, he's, getting, he's trying to work out what's going on and learning things about how exactly things are working and who exactly is behind all this. Oh, it, it, it's, it looks like this is Wanda. This is Wanda. This is all wonder. Oh, oh no! They're making oh. a big point of really reinforcing that to us, aren't they? Yeah. It's wonder. Wonder is doing this. Wonder's is behind it all. Well, <laughs> is it? And then well. when what what a vision finally confronts wonder about all the weird stuff that's happening, and why he can't remember his life before Westview, and then they get a knock at the door, and who would be there but? Wanda's long lost brother Pietro not only alive again, but played by a different actor who has played a different version of that character in a different franchise by a different studio. Evan Peters mm-hmm. returns for the first time. For the as last Quicksilver. time. <laughs> um, is it the Quicksilver from? The X-Men films, or is it just evocative of the Quicksilver from the X-Men films? It's clearly not... It's clear that it's not the same person because you get that wonderful shot of cutting to... to uh, Darcy. To Darcy. Aghast that they recast Pietro. <laughs> yeah. The... Uh, um, I mean, Wanda doesn't immediately react with, like, No, she Pietro? doesn't... She doesn't recognise She's him. like, huh? It takes a minute. And, and then Pietro doesn't recognize vision no nope. either um so it, it's it's interesting because it should we theorize the fuck out of this well, bitch because i have so many thoughts about f- this episode. first of all you get the the lead into that moment which is the credits rolling on the episode which vision refuses to let happen obviously like not carried... obviously not acknowledging that they're there but no. like that she's trying to move well, on i don't know if i don't know if he can <clears> see <throat> them but he can feel that that she's trying to quote unquote end the episode, yeah, and he just won't let it go. And then the credits fizzle out, and it becomes a sort of a, almost a confrontation between them. You've got that wonderful moment where they oh, both they square fly. Off. It's like the yeah. first time ever we've seen Vision get angry. Yeah, like he's enraged, um, and and in the way that in the way that you would be if you were angry at someone you love, and you're surprised at how kind of 
angry you're being. You're like, yeah. Ah! Because it's like, yeah, this is weird. And even Wanda's sort of like, oh, fuck. You've never and talked to me like this before. She And she's not hurt because she obviously is like, maybe you're right to be angry at me. Like, you can see that there's a she, there's a lot well, of inner yeah, conflict because... going on with her right now. And But then you have that moment of her, the knock at the door coming. Vision. Well, she she says before that happens, I don't know how it started. Yeah. She just mentions that offhand. I don't know how this started. Now she could be fibbing, or it could but be. I have like, theories. I have so many fucking it, theories. It could it could be an idea of like I don't know how it started in the sense that I don't. I, this isn't what I meant. I don't know how we got to this point. Yeah, because we know she's um, she, we know she's aware of it, yeah. and we know that she can leave. Yeah, in because in this episode. She confronts Sword by throwing their drone back at them. And when she goes back into the quote-unquote real world, she has her accent as well. Yeah, the Sokovian accent is back and stronger than ever. she inside the, the hex. She's also back in her costume. Because in yes. this episode, we establish with Monica Rambeau, they examine her clothes from when she came out. Her 70s duds are lit, laced with Kevlar. Well, because they, they are, they the are her clothes. With, yeah, yeah they're, they're her sword uniform and like SWAT uniform that she went in with. So we know that Wanda can't... It's a great way to establish that Wanda can't create things inside the hex, which is fucking great, by the way. Darcy, like, focusing on the hexagonals and calling it the hex, because it's like, you just fucking 2000s comic book movie too ashamed to come up with a terminology backdoored your way into using the character's actual yep. descriptive power set. Hex magic. Hex also, powers. Also still haven't called her the Scarlet Witch yet. And they make a point in this as well. They're like, like wait, so she's got like no code name, no alias? Like, no, <laughs> like, she's no, not just, the Scarlet just Wanda. Witch. In just universe, Wanda. she's not the Scarlet Witch. Next week's Halloween, so let's see that change. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, so, so it's a great way to establish that Wanda can't create things inside the Hex. She can only change their appearance or their motivations in, the t- in case of people, in terms of yeah. people's behaviour. Um, or at least the moment, because I have a theory about the whole mind control thing. Yes. Um, we find out that Wanda liberated slash stole Vision's body from the sword facility uh, yeah. a few weeks before this event. Um, we see her marching the fuck in there, going at these scientists who have got like Vision's head and torso and his arms on different... Yeah, they're, they're di- they've dissected him. Yeah, which is like... Oh shit! Now, if Vision was in sword custody, apparently they—I they, can't remember if this correct wording is this—but it suggests that Vision gave his like upon death. This was the plan to prevent his body being taken well, and they, used as a weapon. They mentioned that his living will, yeah, stated that no attempt should be made to revive him. Yes, which they then point out, Wanda has obviously breached that. Yeah. So what Wanda has gone against his one wish. Um, and the attempt, yeah, there's no attempt, one should attempt to revive him to or to use him as a weapon. Yeah, is the implication that Vision's like, yeah, don't, no one, no one, like, I, if I'm dead, I'm a dead person. Yeah, destroy my body or bury my body or do what you can with my body to learn how to make the world better or whatever, but you do not bring me back. You get rid of whatever I am as this form. Um, Wanda breaches that. She goes and steals the goddamn corpse. And it's really morbid when you see it, because it's the second visual indicator we've had so far of, yeah, Vision dead. Vision's dead, guys. He's fucking dead. Um, and we have a third one coming up based on the trailer. Um, with the uh, the whole, you're dead. <laughs> Moment that we keep seeing in the trailers. Um, so there's that. Uh, so Wanda, of course, like if she's just changing matter, she walks out of the hex and her clothes are... It's her costume. Because that's what she was wearing when she went into the hex, and all the clothes she's worn since are just the costume, like re yeah. rejiggered around to to be, you know, flannel shirts and <clears throat> the formal dresses and everything. Um, imagine if doing your hair was that easy, though. I'll just step through <laughs> here and have one hairstyle, and step back through here and have a different hairstyle. I mean, it is for her. Yeah. Um. So we've got that. We have the insistence that she can get the the the. Sorry, the confirmation that she can leave there anytime she wants and that she doesn't kill anyone, but she threatens the director of sword. Standing yeah. the 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 um the, the the temporary director of sword. 
she doesn't threaten Monica, but she makes it very clear that like you're not fucking welcome back in here. Go away. Yeah. Um. So we have that. Meaning that the kids are either kidnapped kids, which we've sort of established in the show is very unlikely, or they've been created, and her magic doesn't affect them. Her magic doesn't no. affect the kids. Because she so the can't kid... make them stop crying. Yeah. She also didn't create the dog. And she didn't age them up. And she didn't age them up. They did that themselves. I have a theory. So, What's your theory, Chris? So, in the start of this episode, the sitcom continues. And I love the fact we're fl- fl- flitting between the two now. I think that's really fun. It's, yeah. the right, it's the right decision. Also, the episode was the longest yet. And the amount of time we spent in the sitcom world was still roughly about 21 minutes. <laughs> so, like, they, do you know what I mean? It was like, okay, that's... It's very clever. That's clever. Uh, we're still getting our full American half-hour sitcom, um, which is pretty nifty. Uh, and the, the, the showrunner and, and the writers have confirmed this week that, oh, there have been other episodes of WandaVision that we've just not seen, but Darcy and Jimmy and co. have watched. Like, there's the show doesn't run completely concurrently yeah. with what we see. So one division has had several episodes. The but we're TV. seeing all the relevant stuff. <clears throat> we're seeing the relevant ones, yeah. So um, in the opening, they're trying to get the babies to be quiet and it's all sitcom, 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 la 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 and Vision dressed as a turkey and, <laughs> and the theme song and everything. The 80s overly long credit sequence. Yeah. Um, which is brilliant. Um, and Agnes With comes over. With the lyrics about things being out of control. Yes, fucking yeah! Right. Oh god, the the um, the uh, the the Lagos uh, paper towels. Yeah. When you clean up a mess you didn't mean to make, or whatever it was, and like it's always red wine. Yeah. It's like, oh, of course, because she fucking killed a lot of people by accident in Lagos. All of these adverts are just her timeline of recent tragic events being recounted through the ads. This is really yep. weird. Um, but yeah, so uh. Agnes comes over, like, permahoy, clearly going to a, like, workout class, like, in leg warmers and bright pastel and neon colours and everything. She tries to get the babies to go quiet, and then it, uh, Vision says she doesn't have to hold the babies. And she's like, oh, is that, did, you, did you want to go again? And she doesn't yeah. seem, she doesn't seem scared or, or terrified like she and the other neighbour did a little bit a couple of weeks back. She seems just a bit awkward, like, oh, should we, do you want to take that again? Okay. And that's really weird, because that's the first sort of, the fuck, moment in this episode. Yeah. Because even Wanda's sort of a bit like, um... <laughs> no, don't don't be silly. We'll, uh, yeah. And it's like, right. Then Agnes witnesses the children growing up and has no problem with it. Yep. Then Agnes, when they find a dog, which is called Sparky... Which is a fucking reference to the Tom King run of Vision, <laughs> which is nice. Um, and, and also Billy and Tommy are dressed in their respective uh, Wiccan and Speed colours throughout all of this yep. as well, which is nice. Um, Agnes brings over a dog bed, like a, like, a, like a portable kennel and some stuff for the dog. Immediately and they... after Vision <clears throat> says, says that they can't that's what's going to happen. Yeah, because he points out that she always, and, and you know, Wanda's like, oh, she's neighbourly. She always helps out with stuff. Like, but it, Vision's like, yeah, at the exact moment we need something, she always seems to come over, which of course tracks episode one. She's the one helping with the emergency like dinner party and everything. Like Agnes is always there. She's the one who gets Wanda to notice they've not got wedding rings. So, oh yeah, okay. And then by the end of the episode, she creates the wedding rings. And mm-hmm. Agnes has been there to help the entire series, help reinforce the lie somewhat. So there's that. She's also the one who plants the doubts in Vision's mind about uh, Geraldine, aka okay, yep. Monica. And that's the only time she's spoken out of whack. That's the only time she's ever been like, maybe you should. Do there's, de- about there's definitely Geraldine different about her. Right. So, but not not. She wasn't like. Have you ever noticed when Wanda's been, or have you never? It was just Geraldine. Geraldine, yeah, yeah. get rid of Geraldine. Almost as though if they get rid of Geraldine, everything will be fine again. So, 
Agnes has long suspected, sort of online, people have been sort of speculating she's part of it. Why would you cast Catherine Hahn and make a big point of her being one of the cast members? And Yeah. And, you know. Hey, and apart people, from the fact that she's fabulous, which she is. Apart from the fact that she's fabulous. Yeah. People have speculated that she is maybe Agatha Harkness, who's sort of one of the few kind of Wanda-specific antagonists, at least in the way that she's gotten under Wanda's skin. I mean, she's a Fantastic Four character primarily. Hmm. Oh, she's originally introduced as the nanny for Franklin, yeah. who just happens to be a witch. Yeah, because she's Fantastic Four, <laughs> and and she's gone toe to toe with Strange. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Agnes Harkness is basically a very old, very powerful witch yeah. in the MCU, in the in the Marvel Comics universe, who fucks around with people. But she has she has uh toed gone toe to toe with the Scarlet Witch before. And there has also been a storyline in the comics where the Scarlet Witch had kids that were taken away by Mephisto. Which is why a lot of people now are really, really drilling in online the whole, Mephisto's involved! Mephisto's involved! I'm like, the Marvel Universe has experimented and this show's this this show is like, yeah, the MCU's not afraid to experiment, but I also still think that they wouldn't try to upset the American public by going, so the devil's in this now, because American audiences are very odd in how they receive depictions of religious iconography. They either take great offense to it or are like, no, sure. We know it's fiction. Fine. Whatever. Go for it. In terms of the religious American population. So Mephisto doesn't feel like something they would likely do unless they changed it in some way. Or you do an Iron Man 2, an Iron Man 3, mm. etc. You combine your villains in, in a way. We don't need Mephisto, necessarily. If you want satanic stuff, you could always go for a witch. So, the kids seem to come, like, organically. They are created. Wanda did not bring them into this world and change them. They don't listen to her magic, and Agnes is completely fine with them existing and changing age in front of her. Not only that, Agnes supports Wanda in all of the things that keep the lie going. Yeah including helping the kids keep the dog. You're not allowed to keep the dog till you're older, says Vision. So the kids age themselves up. Then Agnes brings them the dog who's eaten some like poison berries in her garden and has died. Or maybe she's just killed the dog. Because, <laughs> now, because now the kids are going to age up to get over it because they think that's the right thing to do. And then Wanda steps in and actually does some soul searching and is like, no, grief is a part of us you have to live with it you can't just bring things back that's not right because she so goes she's like cause she says like just being a huge hypocrite well the kids go like bring them back from the dead and agnes very briefly goes you can do that and that skipped over really quickly so it's like agnes didn't didn't fucking flinch at the notion of that she was like you can do that but you're right yep. wanda being a massive hypocrite so wanda's story here is one of grief but also that complete tunnel vision. Yeah. Like, she knows it's wrong to dig up your fucking lover's corpse and weekend at Bernie's it through a happy marriage scenario, but she's doing it. So there's that. Wanda also doesn't remember how it started, apparently. Which is almost like, yeah, that's a good point. This vision just remembers this life. Vision Yeah, he doesn't do. remember anything from before that. Yeah, Vision would do if he was, say, rebooted or indeed was just a puppet of this facsimile. Like, we've seen footage in the trailer, the mid-season trailer, of Vision going up to the edge of the hex. And I'm wondering whether or not he's going to be able to not get through or when he gets through, a bunch of fucking parts just fall to the ground and they're not alive. Like, Vision's alive only in the hex. Yeah. Um which would be extra creepy because she then is just puppeteering a corpse. Might explain why she saw the greyed out, like broken skulled version of him last yes. week. Cause that's what's really is there. Her concentration's broken for a moment and the corpse of her, her former lover is staring at her. Um, so that's great. But Agnes has been fine with all this stuff. She's encouraged subtly the kids to age up twice, maybe because the kids need to be, oh, I don't know, a certain age or their powers need to be at a certain level. For someone to take advantage of them. But not only that. The other clue. A couple clues. That Agnes is definitely the fucking antagonist of this series. And that we're really being made to believe that Wanda is the antagonist. Yeah. Aside, I mean the director being like. So Wanda's doing this. Wanda's behind this. Wanda's threatened us. It's got to be Wanda. 
this episode really went down, really doubled down on the mind control element of this. Yeah. So when Monica went into the hex, she was mind controlled. She says she was kind of aware that this was wrong, but she went into it. So she wasn't in deep cover. She was in like a trance. She was just yeah. part of this day-to-day life. But something in her head, something in her head was telling her, nope, something's wrong. Something is wrong here. And that's why she doesn't she doesn't show up in episode one because she's not there yet. And then in episode two, she's she's there and oh, she'll help out of the talent show. And oh, isn't this fun? <laughs> episode three, she gets a bit closer because she's like, it's something to do with her. I need to I need to get closer to Wanda. I need to talk to Wanda. Um, they they make a point as well, like she didn't bring any sword. Pe- yeah, they didn't. The reason she broke out is because she was a sword agent. Like she's had enough sort of training and briefing on things like superhero stuff that you know she her mind would kind of fight against it a little bit. Yeah, even if she didn't know. So there's that. Mind control is something they keep going in on. Wanda doesn't remember how this all started. Maybe Wanda's not the one doing the mind control here. Yes, we know she can push people's will. We saw it in Age of Ultron. It was the first and last time we saw her do it. She made people see visions and horrible stuff. That like She made the Hulk attack everybody and Stark see the vision of the world fucked up that led to the creation of Ultron. Like, you know, she she can do that but she doesn't really do that anymore and they make a thing in this episode as well saying right so she was a bad guy then she was a good guy now she's a bad guy again i was like huh maybe not maybe she's being used by someone because the next clue is norm norm in the best scene of the episode for my money briefly when emails introduced i love that that's how um jimmy and darcy get in touch with vision they email him Because, like, they're in the 80s now, so they're starting to get electronic mail. And like, oh. And Vision, of course, has set it up better than everyone else because he is like, you know, I know about this stuff. Well, well, yeah. It's almost like you can speak their language. Yeah, which is, again, comedy line. Ah! But then he he wakes Norm up. Yeah. And I can't remember the name of his real identity, but, like, oh, God, the actor is so fucking good in this moment. Yeah. Because he suddenly is just snapped out of it and he's panicking because it's like his kids are with his sister, I think he says. like, And he's like, oh my God, I need to call her and make sure that they're okay. What is this? And Vision's like, right, talk to me. I'm like, Norm, what's wrong? He's like, Norm, who's Norm? It's like, I don't, oh God, she's in my head. She keeps telling me like what to do. She's in my head. And then when he comes back, oh, the way he plays, that's beautiful. It, it was like, um, do you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the scene with the, uh, the housemaid in Get Out. Yes. You know what I mean? Where, where she's like, her eyes are saying a completely different... Well, no, her face is saying one thing, but like her eyes crying and the sort of pattern of her speech is saying a completely different thing because it's that suppressed personality fighting. This was like the opposite, where he, he went from that panic to his face just resetting to norm. Mm. Back to norm. Uh, he doesn't say wonder. Vision no. suspects Wanda because Vision 2 is like something's going on and that's the thing that linked him to confront Wanda. Yeah. But he doesn't say Wanda. He says, she's in my head. You have to stop her. Also, Agnes is the only person on the ID wall from last week who doesn't have a driver's license or physical ID attached to their personnel sheet. That's the, Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest one that have got, that's got people talking. It would it's- not surprise me so so Catherine would... Hahn is either Agatha Harkness or the MCU's take on Mephisto, I think. Like, she's... Do you know what I mean? It's... it's yeah. we, we're playing with reality so much in this that it would be... It would kind of be... I feel like they're going backwards a bit if it turns out to be, no, it's a magical space stone doing this, or no, it's all a hallucination from this computer. Like, it's like, no. Yeah. Let's... let's Let's do magic. Well, knowing that this is going to, uh, even in probably only a tangential way, but knowing that this is going to lead into Doctor Doctor Strange Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, starring Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. So. Like, we know that it's, there's something otherworldly going on. I mean, that brings us to Evan Peters, because Evan Peters played peter maximoff um who has a younger sister who's unnamed but has curly red hair 
Yeah. Not a twin. Um, and is clearly suggested that he's the child of Magneto, but not necessarily. It might just be more of an Easter egg for comics fans. Um, he is alive in the 70s, 80s, and 90s setting of X-Men Apocalypse, uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix, respectively. Yep. Although no one should ever have any respect for those films. Um, and he because he ages super fucking slowly apparently yeah. like all of the cast in that magneto's meant to be like 58 don't in x-men dark it. phoenix don't even think about and it's it. clearly it's clearly just shredded 42 year old michael fassbender it's like what is this um but so he played peter maximoff he didn't play pietro twin of wonder he played peter maximoff here he's pietro he doesn't recognize vision even though the real pietro would recognize vision well he doesn't um, he, say his he, name's he's Pietro, not... but he answers to it when... Yeah. And he's like, what's why your big brother come in the town? He's basically playing the long-lost Hellraiser brother comes and visits the family for shenanigans episode yeah. of a sitcom. Like that's. What, I mean, even the way he plays it, he's not playing it like Quicksilver, how he played him before. He's not playing it how either he or Aaron Taylor Johnson played the part. Yeah. He's, he's playing cocky sitcom brother. So, this is... Oof. So I'd say that this is like, maybe this is trolling on purpose. Like, whatever he is, Wanda says, I didn't do that when the knock at the door happens. Because Vision's like, stop trying to distract me. She's like, I didn't do that. So this is another thing that is either created or pulled from somewhere else. Yeah. So Pietro's dead. Whoever's in charge of all this is like, well, he's dead. I'll just pick another one. Fuck it. And just pulls another Quicksilver out of the multiverse yeah or it's troll casting and it's that whole thing of like another one's just been created but because whoever it is doesn't know what pietro looked like they're just like fuck and they just put one together and they're doing it to make us all go that's funny that you've brought the other guy who's played quicksilver in a movie to play this quicksilver yeah that's funny if it weren't for one detail the internet figured out very quickly if you watch the episode with the hard of hearing um, English audio description, or you watch it with uh, the subtitles with directives, yeah, I saw this. It says, um, uh, "Quicksilver, a uh, uh, Quicksilver from the X Men films." Yeah. So, are we in the multiverse? Is it happening here? Is this where it starts? I mean, that would suggest that, yeah. Because uh, Spider-Man 3 is all but confirmed to have something multiversal going on. Tom Holland denied this week Garf- Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire being in it. But Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina are in it. That's been confirmed that they have signed to be in it. There's not been a statement from Marvel, but the stories have been they have signed to b- appear in this film. So it could be that they just appear in a sequence and there's some multiverse shenanigans going and it's just a cameo from both of them. Which I'd prefer. I'd fucking prefer that. I don't want a whole multiverse Spider-Verse I mean, movie we, in the live we, action. We, it... we had Spider-Verse. We don't need it again, but white. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. For God's sake, yeah. Just missing the point of like why that that film was not a cultural phenomenon because there were lots of spider people in it. No. Um, It was extra great because of all the spider people in it, but that's not why it was great. Yeah, I mean, um, I like spider people, so yeah, I'm down with it. <laughs> bring on spiders, man. Um, so yeah, I just <sighs> maybe the multiverse is breaking down, or maybe it's just a cheeky cameo. Maybe it's one character, and this is going to lead Wanda into exploring the multiverse. Oh <gasps> shit! Oh my god, whoever the antagonist is has done this, and it is actually indeed Pietro, a Peter Maximoff, and he gets sent back to his dimension or timeline or whatever afterwards, and this is the last we ever see of the Fox X-Men universe. Like, this is it, aside from Deadpool, this is it. Sure, fine, got it. But this leads Wanda, whatever happens at the end of this, she loses vision, but the notion that she could find him again. Kingpin in Spider-Verse style. Yeah. And that's where it Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness comes in because Wanda is trying to tear a way through different realities to find one where Vision is still alive. Maybe that's where it's going. Who knows? That's where I take it. But what it... Who knows? Who could, say? Who, could say? 
All I know is that was the most what the fuck moment I've had watching TV in a while in a really good way. It made me very happy. Like, I, I reacted big to the last episode of Mando Series 2. I was like, oh! Yeah. But mostly because I was, I can't believe they went there. This was that again, but also, I can't believe they went there. And also, what? <laughs> the fuck is happening? What is this? It was just, um, a, it was just absolutely ridiculous. I'll say this now. Please give Aaron Taylor Johnson a scene. Please give him one scene at the he very fucking least. Well, he's, he, here's the thing. He and Kevin Feige and a few others confirmed a couple of years after Age of Ultron that the character is definitively dead. They refer to um, Pietro in the MCU as, as their Uncle Ben. Like, yeah. he's not coming back. Uh, he is dead. He has to be dead for Wanda's story to mean anything. But he also signed a three-picture deal when he signed on to Age of Ultron. That might just be a standard contract for... Could be a standard contract, Disney in which though. case, well done, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, get your money. Yeah. But it would also... I don't know. I feel like it's a wasted opportunity to not at least tease him. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe have Wanda... Yeah, maybe have Wanda you. change... Maybe in the next episode, have her change his appearance. Like, and try to do it and that's when she realizes there's two different forces at play here do you know what i mean imagine if she yeah. gets to have like some closure with her pietro even if it's just a scene i'd be like that's cool like that is fucking cool um and again it would be them doing what endgame did for the dark world it'd be one division going hey you know that avengers movie out the four that you're not as hot on bet you appreciate it more now don't you Mm. It's like, yeah, you you got me, you, you got me there, you bastards. Because so far, the recommended reading unquote for this movie, for this TV series, has basically been Age of Ultron and Infinity War. That's been your recommended reading, yeah. really. Civil War Two, but not not to be confused with the comic book event Civil oh, War mean, Two, Endgame, which should course. never be looked at ever. Well, you could skip to the last twenty minutes of Endgame and get all the Wonder content you need. <laughs> It's almost as if Disney Plus needs to come up with a series that kind of gives recaps for characters before... Oh, wait, no, that exists. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Mar- was it um, um, Marvel Studios Legends. Legends? Using the Marvel Legends logo from the toy lines, but with studios inside. Which I... when Because I, I, the week before WandaVision came out, I watched the two shorts they put together for that. And it's basically just a playlist of, here's what you need to know about these characters. Why? Well, I guess you're going to be seeing them again in a week. Mm-hmm. Um but the logo for Marvel Studios Legends is just the Marvel Legends logo with Marvel Studios put on it. It's like, that's that's some very subtle cross-marketing with your merchandise, you cheeky bastards. Speaking of cheeky bastards, we've got an email. We have. <laughs> and I really hope they're not offended by me calling them a cheeky bastard. This one comes in. Oh, God. The title, title line, Sword. <clears throat> yes. Top secret communicate, authenticate. Dr. Darcy Lewis's findings regarding the Maximoff anomaly. High levels of radiation present at perimeter. Effect on Westview residents unknown. Please advise. Um. Guess that must have been the spam thing. Yeah. Get rid of that. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, this one comes in from James. It says, Hey, James. It says, Chris, Matt, we need. We need to talk. Oh. One Division, episode yes. five. Yes, James. The show just keeps getting better. Vision <laughs> is starting to ask questions. I can't wait to see where his investigation leads him. The scene between him and Norm. Wow. Yes. A scene oh, for God, yeah. was fantastic. His tradition is tradition. I think that's supposed to be transition. From sitcom to panic and back and back. Heartbreaking. What was the actor called? A Cephali. A Cephali. Just want to give him credit because yes, we yeah, it's fucking yeah, great. We spent ten minutes going, yeah, that was the best performance yeah. in the whole episode. <laughs> yeah, very good. It's very very good. Uh, I've decided that I really want a Disney Plus show about Darcy, Jimmy, and Monica. It'll never happen, but an Agents of Sword might be fun. Apparently, there is talk. buzz yeah. talk that of, of, of getting a Jimmy Woo spinoff and uh, uh, Randall Park's been like, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> I just, I just again, Disney Plus short season. Like yeah. five episodes, mini series, a comedic take on a on an action adventure thing. Yeah, if, I, yeah. If put Darcy get... in it as well. Yeah, put Monica yeah. in it. You know, well, Monica will be busy in Captain Marvel too. But yeah, yeah. but by all means, please, please, um, 
Randall Park and uh, and Kat Dennings doing the X Files, but tongue in cheek in the MCU. Yes, please. Yes, I'd I'd watch that. We um, already believe. There's the tagline. I already we do already believe. <laughs> um, it seems to me now that Wanda is definitely not entirely in control of the situation. There are aspects of this reality that she's not aware of. If she isn't completely in control, then who is? The people of Westview, cer- uh, <laughs> of Westview certainly believe she is. Or do they? It's interesting she can't control the twins. They choose their appearance. Wanda's clearly in pain. And of course she is when she found Vision's body sword and dissected it. Sword or specifically Hayward are almost as bad as Hydra Shield. How <laughs> did Cap and Co... Oh, I like that, poor Monto. Uh, how did Cap and Co allow this? They were the last people in possession of his body in Wakanda. Well, it wasn't in Wakanda. Yeah, it was back in America. Yeah, so mm. I imagine I imagine it got taken when uh, you know the the blip happened because then we get this five years between his body being in Wakanda and the start of this yeah. plus another plus another few weeks. Yeah, from people yeah. coming back from the blip because yeah. So also, is this set that soon after the blip? Uh... After everyone came back, is it set that soon? I think it's like it's, three it's, weeks it, or something. It's implied by that because of Monica's journey and how quickly yeah. she gets back on the job. But, um, you know. Like, it's pretty soon after. So basically, Wanda left Stark's funeral and then went, right, where's his fucking body? Yeah. <laughs> where's Viz's body? Or, yeah. or, oh, well, I guess I better start to get used to life without Viz. Oh, what's that? mesmeric spell from that witch over there mm. oh now i'm your servant and i'm gonna go and steal vision's body and create a tv spin-off um theories that are probably incorrect i'll be listening back to this on like friday or saturday going yeah you fucking idiot you had no idea can't wait to find out <laughs> uh more meaning in advertising uh finally we had those final moments a new arrival in westview pietro kind of Peter, it's Peachy. Peachy Maximal. Uh, Peachy. It will be interesting to see how they explain this. Is it a multiverse of madness? Is this Peter Maximoff, son of Eric Lenshaw, or has he been created by some other force? With this recast, I've seen some introduce the idea uh, of multiversing other characters. Specifically, I saw Pedro Pascal as Star Lord. Thought it was fun. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if you want to get rid of. Uh, Chris Pratt in exchange for Pedro Pascal. Chris Pratt, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, finally, <laughs> I'm sure you've already talked about it. We haven't. But I was so sad to hear about Christopher Plummer, a true great. Yeah. One trap to Harlan Thromby and Knives Out. Plummer's made his mark on the world. His life and career shall never be forgotten. Have a good beat, wise. Until next time, from Baby Vision, I mean James. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Thanks, Christopher James. Plummer, hell of an innings, hell of a career. Not necessarily a great guy, but by all means, yeah. I mean, legendary actor. As far as um, like a performance legacy goes, like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I saw the internet going, um, oh, it sort of sucks that so many people just know him as the Knives Out guy. And I'm like, are you kidding? Imagine yeah. imagine having a career that spans long enough that there's a generation yeah. who only know you for your most recent film yeah. who will then go, wait, he's been in more shit and have like hundreds of things to go back and watch if they want to. That's cool. 91, as as, man. Yeah. Dude lived a life. One years old. Dude lived a long ass time. The question yeah. is, who are we now going to recast uh, Kevin Spacey with in other films? Oh, Pedro Pascal. Let's just give him all the yeah. jobs. Let's just, let's just get Pedro Pascal to do everything. He's he's single. He's footloose and fancy free. He's got free time. He says yeah, poggers on Twitter. Like let's let's poggers. Let's you know let's get him involved. Let's well, do it. Speaking of poggers, that's been the big damn cast for this week. Smooth. <laughs> Smooth. Very smooth. Um, <laughs> as always, you know what to do at Big Damn Cast on Twitter, Big Damn Contact at gmail.com, twitch.tv forward slash Big Damn Cast for the old streamer roonies. And of course, support the show if uh, you wish to. Uh, no pressure. At patreon.com forward slash Big Damn Cast. Uh, we'll see you next week. Probably. Well, we won't. We'll. We'll think about you though. Yeah. Next week, should, should we tell them? Sod it. Next yeah, week, yeah, yeah. Our X Men Spectacular continues. We, we saw we saw Evan Peters and thought, you know what? Let's do this. We should probably carry on, considering he's in two of the next yeah. two fil- next three films we're going to talk about. So, so next week we are doing uh, Days of Future Past, D- Doth, Doth, Deadpool, and Apocalypse. Uh, we're going to record it on the Sunday. 
So if you want your emails After for One Division out. episode yeah. six to be read out, get them to us ASAP. Yes. Everything else we'll catch up on the week after. We're like yeah. Quicksilver, but we move twice as slow. <laughs> I'm so close. Very slow. Don't squeeze me up. Um, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.